Hello everyone, I'm Devika Girish. I'm the co-deputy editor of Film Comment Magazine and I program the talk section of the New York Film Festival with my colleague, Madeline Whittle. And I am very thrilled to invite you all, to welcome you all to the 61st New York Film Festival. Thank you for joining us. Um, Today's event is very, very special, and we'll get to that in just a second. But first, I want to thank uh, a whole village of people who have made this year's festival possible. I'd like to thank our board, patrons, members, sponsors, partners, and of course, all of you dedicated attendees and moviegoers who make our work possible, so thank you. Uh, I'd like to give a special thanks to HBO, which is the presenting partner of all NYFF talks. Uh, Film at Lincoln Center is a nonprofit, so we rely on your support uh, for what we do. If you're not a member already, do consider becoming one today. You can find out all about it at filmlink.org. There's lots of exclusive perks and uh, screening, in, screening invites and um, you know just great access to the best cinema all year round if you become a member. So check it out. While you're on our website, sign up for our newsletter, uh, follow us on Instagram and Twitter uh, to stay up to date with whatever's happening at the festival the next two weeks. Um, I would also like you all to put your hands together for our incredible staff and volunteers who really run this show. So thank you to all of them. Uh, today's talk is part of a strand in the talks program called Cross Cuts, and that's Maddie and my favorite section, because basically we get to dream up wild and inspired pairings of filmmakers who we'd like to see talk to each other. It's like fan casting or something, and then we get to make some of those dreams come true. And today's talk is definitely one of those. Uh, the filmmakers who will be joining us today are Eduardo Williams, the director of The Human Surge 3, and Wong Bing, the director of Youth Spring and Man in Black, both of which are screening at the festival. <laughs> Their work might seem very different, but there are some really deep resonances uh, and commonalities. The first of them being that they are my favorite films at the festival, an important um, commonality. And also, I think that they, both filmmakers are are some of the most uh, adept chroniclers of our present. Their films really capture what it feels like to be young and alive today, in my opinion. So we'll dig into all of that. Please welcome to the stage, Wong Bing. Wong is ac accompanied by Vincent, uh, our interpreter for today, who is going to be doing a lot of heavy lifting, so give him a round of applause. <laughs> and please also welcome Eduardo Williams. All right, so I am so excited to have you both with me here today. Thank you, um, you too. I'm going to jump right into it because I have so many questions and we don't have that much time. But what I want to start with is by asking you both uh, what you think of each other's work because you're familiar with each other's work. And uh, Teddy was just telling me there's a connection between you both that goes back 10 years. Maybe you want to start us off, Teddy. Uh, about the, that connection? Yeah, I'm, I was showing a short film I made in Vietnam in a film festival in France, in Marseille, and Wang Bing was in the jury, and they gave me a special mention, so that was nice. <laughs> but I don't know, maybe, I don't know if he was for or against that, but, <laughs> but for in my mind, it's a good way of starting uh, to know someone, right? And then we met several times afterwards. Uh, and then I, I also saw his films. I don't know which was the first one, but long ago. And today I saw Youth. And uh, yeah, recently I saw Man in Black. Uh, and yeah, but I'm very bad at, sp I barely, can barely speak about my own <laughs> films. So to explain why I like other films, it's very difficult for me. And also I was thinking, it's also like 
when I started to like being to cinema, I tried as much as I could to still be a spectator in the films, you know? I, I, I mean, of course, I, can, I can't go back and not be a filmmaker now, but I try to see the films not as a filmmaker and as much as I can as a spectator. So I don't really, I try not to, I don't know. I don't have very much. I don't, I'm not good at thinking about films, maybe. <laughs> Well, you're going to have to get good at it in this hour. I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> uh, but Wong, maybe uh, you, you also just told me that you've known Teddy's work for a while. And, and what are your kind of impressions of his work or memories of, of his work? Uh, I was in uh, 10 years ago, the first film. When I was in the first time, I was in 哎，这个导演他拍的就是，呃，跟别人都不太一样，比较自由。So the first time I actually encountered his film was ten years ago for the short film, as you mentioned, and my first impression was that、uh, the film is so unique and so different from the rest, and、um, and it's very free. 呃，呃，那么我当时觉得很。就是说有一些疑问，我说为什么他是一个阿根廷的人，可是他在越南拍这样一个片子。So at the time I have some questions while I was watching the first film that I saw from him is that so he's an Argentinian director, why is that the film was set in Vietnam and was shot there? 但是但是这种影像呢，还是就是非常的自由，非常有有有有有一种特点，但它不属于。呃，当然，当然就是说，他他跟呃这个我们习惯呃习惯的电影是有有一些差异，有一些差别。So definitely, what impressed me most was the the freedom and the uniqueness、mm. of the films, and it's、mm. sort of going against any of the film conventions that we're used to. 呃，当然就是说，呃，我还是一个比较。比较保守的一个电影的呃工作的人。So myself as a director, I, I can say that I'm more of the conservative or the conventional type of director. 呃，对，呃，所以 relatively speaking， 呃，总是呃自己会总是控制自己，所以我的呃电影呃在拍在。电影的创作的这种空间、时间上面，啊，还是就是有很很多的对自己对自己的限制。So relatively speaking, I'm a, a little more restrained and more in control, especially when I deal with this temporal or spatial treatments in my films. 嗯，但是他的选择比我更自由。But for him, he has. A lot more options and possibilities, and how he treats temporal and spatial elements. 然后这些年当中呢，我们也有彼此，就是说相互都认识的朋友，然后经常都会听到他的信息，对。And since that、uh, first film, that、uh, we actually have many opportunities to get to get togethers, and we have mutual friends, and we have projects that、uh, we actually work on in terms separately, but、um, for the same、uh, organization. 对，我还是个我个人还是蛮喜欢他的这种影像，很自由的表方式，帮同时呢，就是说，啊，呃，在世界的任何的不同的地点都。都可以，就是说，完全就是以以自他自己个人的这样一个啊立呃，可以说是立足支撑点来看待电影的方式，来拍摄电影的方式。So I love your work, and and I think that、uh, the the freedom of which is something that I I'm ver I admire, and then doesn't matter where you are in the world, that you somehow find out a way. To to you know find a way to to tell your stories differently using cinematic language and an anchor within that unique self that、uh, that just so impressive. So, thank you. <laughs> well,、um, with that, I'd love to dig into one of the ways in which、uh, 
you know, I feel like you share a, a, a common preoccupation, which is uh, the theme of work. So Wong, obviously, you have returned again and again to the theme of work. You've made several films uh, about factories, industries, the, na the life of laborers. Teddy, in your The Human Surge and Human Surge 3, uh, you're often capturing people in the absence of work, in moments of leisure and idleness, but they're talking about work a lot. You know, work is still central to their realities as, as you depict them. Um, so maybe, yeah, I would love for you both to talk about why it feels important for you to depict uh, how life is structured around work. Okay, now I can say a little bit more. <laughs> no, yeah, and then to start with, I think that the reason for me making cinema is, of course, related to work in the sense um, when I, I don't know, when I was maybe 17 or something, I, I, I thought I had to try to choose what to do in my life. And I realized everyone I knew around me uh, had jobs that they didn't like very much. Um, and and they were not interested by uh, and it, that it was very difficult to do something different and at least I thought I mean that was a very depressing perspective for me and I knew it was going to it's not very difficult to come out of that but I thought at least I have to try and then in my head the best idea I had was try to make films because cinema was something that was very strong for me and I thought maybe this could be a job that um, can make my life interesting and I can be interested by and hopefully that was the most difficult part like earning money with it but well I thought I have to try and then when I started traveling to show my films and then to make my films in a very simple way not even looking for it uh, I saw that a, a people in many different countries young people in many different countries all told me the same thing. Uh, I like. I would like to do this, but I would not do it because I don't know, this is the rentable thing to do here in my city or in my country or whatever. And that's something I knew that was my experience, but then it's something that happened everywhere. So uh, of course I realized that's something very common to all of us. I thought about it, but when you just go and meet everyone who's who's in this state and I think it's something very important maybe we get used to it very easily you know and living in a world where almost everyone uh, is not uh, has doesn't have the opportunity of spending their time or most of their time in something that they find interesting at least for them and I think it's terrible I mean maybe it's very obvious to say it but I think it's terrible and I think it's an important thing at least to remember not to forget when you are especially when you are in the you have the privilege of being able to spend your time in an interesting way and survive while doing it <laughs> um, and then for my films while well, thinking more precisely about the films I'm always thinking like um, I mean yeah I'm always thinking uh, how could we look in the film how could we find another way of relating to this or a way of putting that question there, each person in their own way, um, and then trying to get somewhere else, let's say. I don't have like the answers on where to go or how to do to make How this. to dismantle capitalism? You don't have <laughs> yeah. the answers? I have them, but I don't <laughs> say them. There are <laughs> symbols that are hiding this. Uh, and when one of you gets it, then finally someone is as intelligent as the director. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. Um, yeah, exactly. But then it's like, okay, let's try to use cinema to imagine other things, to use the tools of cinema to, to try to spend time together, to come together in different ways, to share ideas, to share forms, to share ways of looking at each other, of looking around us, of uh, spending time together, all of these things. Um, and then of course it's something that uh, when I'm doing a film it's my job and it's everyone's job, right? Mm. So then it's something that we we'll go through in many different ways and of course I try also for it to be hopefully interesting for the others and not only for me um, and then for example in this film something that happened it always different things happen related to this I uh, tried to adapt also the time of the film so people that have jobs can 
still participate in their free time. And also for this film, for example, I wanted to have a wider um, uh, age range mm -hmm. because I, I wanted to like, yeah, to see how maybe my ideas were going to be taken or not taken by people from more different ages. But then it was very difficult for me to be to find people that were a bit older than the age that usually participate in my film, which is, I don't know, from 17 to 30, let's say. Here there's a bit older people, but it was very difficult and mainly the reason was coming back to this working structure. I think as people, as we grow, uh, the, pr the pressure of economy and the responsibilities uh, related to this are more and more and we have less time to participate in maybe things we are curious about, like this film, but are not our main like um, job and we don't have time for it. So even if some people were curious about it, then it was very difficult. So I think this impossibility of working with different ages came back to how uh, and maybe why in my films people have this age because it's just before getting totally captured by the working world. Mm. And Wang, would you would you speak about your interest in work as a topic of your cinema? Uh, so the, the work that I have done so far, two of them definitely feature this concept of and the setting of factories. And definitely uh, some, you know, most of them have something to do with work, but I do think that uh, my focus or foci uh, tend to be a little more varied. So it could be factories, mm. could be work, and definitely a lot about history. Mm. Mm -hmm. So definitely that's one of the topics I'm very interested in in terms of this idea of work, labor, and, and I spend a lot of time uh, making films about that. Uh, uh,刚开始的时候,当然我也不是那么的清楚,但是经过很多年的工作,呃,让我觉得就是说,我为什么要做电影? <laughs> So actually, thinking about why am I making films, and it wasn't that clear to me why uh, in the beginning, and it, it really took quite a while after working and making films for so many years for me to s start to realize the, the, the why for myself. Uh, 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 so during the many years of uh, working in the industry and making films, and I have the privilege to actually work with and to get to know a lot of individuals in society that they tend to be more of the, the working class, the lower, uh, the, the, the mark, sort of the bottom of the society, so to speak, that, that I have the privilege to work with them. Uh在我拍摄的时候,人当中没有人,他们没有人去,他没有人学过电影,他们没有人去想电影是什么,他们从来不会想这样的问题,他们也没有很少有时间看电影。and these people, uh, of course, most of them, if not all of them, they, they didn't learn anything about cinema, about films. They really don't know much about w what film is about and what its impact to the society or what it means to the society. So I do think that uh, f for me, it is interesting to get to work with the people that have no concept of what film means. So mm -hmm. 很多年对我讲,我个人觉得就是,那我在这个过程当中,我想为他们拍电影,我想把我拍的电影就是,因为把电影可以说,我的电影是为他们在拍。
So in a way, uh, for these people, no concept of films, rarely have the chance to watch films. I feel as if my life calling is to make films for them. Because these people, that they tend not to have any time to think about films because of the reality that they are experiencing because the, 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 the needs to just to survive. They need to spend every single moment of their, li of their lives to work, to earn their living. So for me, it's using film as a way to, to make films for them because they, can't, that, uh, they cannot think about or make films for themselves. Mm. 当然这是我自己作为一个电影的作为电影的一个工作我自己是我单方面我个人的这样去看这样去想象的。But uh, uh, again, this is just from my perspective that why I'm doing this. Maybe this is a uh, sort of the one-way uh, street rather than the, the sort of give and take, but that's how and why I make films. Um, I'm curious if the people that appear in your film see the final film, do you show it to them? So some of them did, but uh, some of them didn't. And I don't really care that much about whether or not they, the subjects, mm. I've seen my films. I do think that as soon as I make the films, it exists beyond my physical body in terms of, and I almost have the sense of immortality to it after you make it. Mm. And when it's there, sooner or later, People, when and as this generation, next generations, they will be able to access or have the chance to see the film in the future. Because uh, so this is something that as the journeys that took by those young people, uh, this is the journey I have took for myself to find the why. Why am I working? Why am I making films? And I need the motivation to keep on doing because I'm spending the times, the efforts, and spending my life doing what I'm doing, and I must have a very good reason for it, and that, that is the reason why I'm, I'm doing this. So I think both of your films have titles that are very interesting, poetic, and fr offer a framework for the film. Um, and I was actually thinking that you could even swap the titles, you know? Um, youth, youth Spring could be called a human surge because it is just this portrait of mass production. And your film could be called Youth. Um, so I was curious about how you guys came up with these titles. I mean, Teddy, you came up with this title in 2016. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, very long ago. Now I just added a number, I thought. I think a reason for that was not having to think a new title, probably. Yeah, um, yeah I think a general thing about titles, I try them not to be very helpful on how to see the film. I don't want them to, like, um, close the possibilities of the film. You know, some titles, like, lead you to read the film in one way or the other. So in a general way, I try to uh, choose titles that are as open and not clear, maybe, as possible. Um, and then about the human surge, specifically, I try to remember, but I probably forgot some things. But I think, at least now, what I think, I don't know what I thought when I chose that title. Um, 
Now, I mean, one of the things I liked it was it was a bit uh, grandiloquent in some way. You know, the hu human is already a lot, and Serge also adds even more to it. But then when you... Duh adds a lot, too. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> the most important part. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you see the film, this is also very like uh, everyday life. I mean, it's also fantasy and everything, but the rhythm and everything is very, um, I don't know, it's not so like, you know, we are seeing humanity or whatever. Um, then something I thought it was, okay, if this title is playing a little bit with representation of humanity, which I think and I hope the film doesn't try to do in that way. I think it was good to participate, to do it with people that are, in, at least in the places where I am, are usually not seen as, as the representation of humanity, you know, in a, at least not the people that are looked at more often um, on the places in many cases. Um, and then what else? Um, no, I think it also came from this sensation that we have of like the, the humanity being in some sort of peak of something. Um, and then when you also when you see the film, it's just, I don't know, I, I think it contrasts a little bit with this. Um, and then I like like the human surge seems to be like the human surge and then there's a three and then you imagine so the human surge is not the human surge and it's finally you know more diverse than that and I don't know brings this possibility of being maybe less special uh, as you know as this as the special moment let's say I don't know. <laughs>因为对我来说在一个很多人很大的这样的工作里边因为在我的年轻的时候就很小的时候我中国的社会它的那种都是革命现实革命的这种主题都是一个历史性的那种宏观的所谓的一个社会化的一个宏观的所以我很对这种宏观性我总是有一种有一种就是说有一种很难控制我有这方面的障碍，但是我理解他的意思，我非常清楚他的意思。但但是我们之间是不一样的。So I definitely can understand how you arrived at your titles, and to me, uh, it's just something that I feel so uneasy to think about this idea of having a title that is to express this sense of macro grand narratives that the uh, uh, grandeur mm. uh, because I, I think that for me it is something that almost like a phobia developed as a result of what happened in the past in Chinese histories during the uh, cultural revolution periods or uh, similar periods of those idea of grand narrative of this sort of social movements uh, in a ma very macro level mm. so for me I, I tend to be more uh, comfortable to somehow uh, narrow in on more the micro level, more of the individuals and who are, uh, whether or not it's in certain industries and in factories. Uh, in this particular case, for youth, it will be for these group of people working in um, the factories. So I, I do think that that is something, it just, I can't help it because of my past. 
and it is something that I, uh, I am, I'm more comfortable uh, not so much of focusing on the macro and the grand narrative, but more so to the, the individuals and then on the mic micro level. I think that both of you have a totally distinctive approach to time. Um, even though, Teddy, you're using kind of different technologies, kind of more experimental technologies, and maybe Wang's techniques can be called more classical in a certain sense, but I had a similar experience of um, feeling like I was in, I was experiencing time as it was experienced by the subjects of the film. So in the case of Youth Spring, I really felt like I, I actually sometimes had to like, ma had to like pinch myself to make sure like, or not pinch myself. I wasn't sure if the, if the footage wasn't sped up because the workers in the film move so fast. And the way the film is structured really helps you experience what it's like to live a life driven by production, by relentless production. And Teddy, with your film, you feel like you're trapped in an eternal present, which is what it feels like to be on the internet. It's like time is still, but also moving. So I want to ask about like the editing and pacing of the films and how you conjure this very particular experience of time. And maybe Wang will start with you this time. Mm 就是过去我很少这么用就是说在剪辑当中在十几分钟比如说在二十分钟这样一个时间单元里边那可能你需要是压缩所以这是就是说是一个就是尽可能的去把这个叙述变得非常的简单。So actually for me, uh, I use different ways to do temporal treatment. Depends on the subject matter, depends on the films that I'm making. For this particular one, youth, I think this is probably one of the first times that I uh, very, very different from how I used to treat time or this, the, the tempo treatment is to compress the time to a 20 minutes per episode mm. uh, to create and structure the narrative that I want to structure. So in order for me to do that, uh, to pack all the material and information in 20 minutes so that I can have standalone episodes uh, and link them together to create a narrative structure is something that I, I haven't done before and it is something that uh, you know, it's a challenge for me for this particular film to do this particular type of temporal treatment. So in a way, relatively speaking, it's more conventional, it's more conservative in terms of this idea of compressed time uh, for this particular film. So this is, as I said, uh, the first time I'm doing this, and it's very different from what I have done before. <clears throat> and meanwhile, time is a very big thing also. I think to start with, um, many of the things that relate to how time passes in the film come from my own experience, as you said, maybe of spending most of my life on the internet, um, may, or, or the computer, or the video games, or whatever, or this, this virtual world. Um, then, uh, so most of it comes from a more of a living experience more than thinking about it then of course as i the more as i do i think um, a little bit more in a more conscious way but then there's many things about rhythm and temporality that i realize 
for example, more precisely, is like the, the time of the dialogues, for example, and how they come and go from one uh, theme to the other, let's say, or one subject to the other. I think that relates a lot with being used to speak to people through chat, you know? It's very different to speak to someone live, of course, than to speak in a chat. And in the moments of my life where I almost only spoke to, well, not so much, but almost only spoke to people through chat, then when I was speaking uh, live, I was like, oh my god, I'm supposed to uh, to answer right away, you know? People speak and they look at you and you are supposed just to say something. You cannot leave and then come back and they will still be there like in the chat, you know? And also how the how the subjects come and go in a chat, sometimes you mix, you know? You have this and you speak about this and you go back to that. And I think in the film we see a lot of these dynamics and I think that's why they look a little bit strange and also familiar, I feel, for the spectators, because most of us are, in different ways, are used to that. And then also when I construct the film, I try to think... First of all, sometimes I have like the... Um, like the sort of idea of should I do films that are a bit more agile and more like exciting m more time, um, I don't know how do you say, try to be exciting more m most of the time. But then in my opinion, I think at least in my life, I feel temporality outside of cinema is usually tends a lot to anxiety and then to speed, mm -hmm. at least where I live or in the, yeah, in the, in the spaces or where I am. Um, yes. So I think for me as a spectator, uh, cinema worked many times as an exercise of patience and observation mm -hmm. and as a rhythm that I cannot find so much in life. So I try in my films also to promote this to promote patience and also to th try to create like pa patience and rewards in some way. Of course, then each person sees it in their own way and what for some people is are moments of, of like nothing happening or things like that that tend more to patience. For uh, some people, that's the best. But in general, I try to create these dynamics and also because I really like as a spectator too, as a director, to create films that let you go back to your mind and then come back to the film. I don't, for me, it's not the best when a film is always trying to capture my attention, right? Um, so I try also, of course, again, I never know how each person sees the film, but there's moments where it's more probable that everyone will be more connected to the film or something is happening that's more exciting or, or weirder. And then when maybe people walk for a long time and speak in the same pace for a long time, it's more probable that most of the people were going to maybe look around or think about another thing. For me, when I'm seeing a film and I'm able to think about another thing and come back, is the best way of connecting the film to myself, you know. Mm -hmm. When I'm always there, 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 and I, all, the only thing that matters is what will happen next, for me that is not very interesting and also it adds to the anxiety that w w I see very much in the world. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think I keep forgetting the runtime of your film, like when I was writing the blurb, because it felt lo a lot longer than it actually is because of this sense of elastic time, you know? And uh, with youth, I feel like it actually felt a lot shorter than it is. It's three and a half hours, but it feels so compressed and um, you really feel what it's like to live life kind of on the edge or with this urgency of survival. Wang, just to follow up, on what I asked, what kind of experience of time did you want the viewer to come away with, with that compression? Uh,首先就是说我现在这个青春呢还没有完成,其实我在来纽约之前正刚刚把第三部分剪辑结束,然后我很快会把你在剪辑第二部分。所以整个的这个片子呢，还有两部分是在可能未来几个月之后才能完成。所以总的长度在九个半小时左右。So for youth, this is only one of the three. So it's a trilogy, and so to be continued. And right now, I'm actually just wrapping up for my third installment of the trilogy, and I'm going to walk backwards for the the second installment of 
the trilogy. So oh, all together, just like Teddy. Yeah, three and then two. <laughs> so uh, all together, it, it's going to be nine hours and thirty minutes for the entire youth trilogy. Wow. Uh, so I need to be able to do the photos a lot. So uh, I have a lot of footage, and that's the reason, also one of the reasons why I need to compress time. Uh, so I have made quite a few films with a lot of footage, uh, starting with the first one, West of Tracks, about 300 hours of footage. And then later on, I have films with 600 hours of footage, 1,000 hours of footage. For youth, I have 2,600 hours of footage that I have to... Uh, process. Mm. So that's also one of the reasons why it's so important to compress time to find the most concise and simple way to structure the narrative. Uh, 在结构上有的是在时间的压缩的方式来解决有时通过结构来解决这些这些电影的这种时间的叙述一直是延续这种一直在过去的一百年前就是大家都在思考这样的问题不断的都在思考这个时间的问题包括结构的叙述的问题这
what the the audience or what the society wants or whether or not they should still be true to themselves in terms of how to be more natural with how time uh, being presented in the films. I think that those are the uh, uh, important issues that uh, uh, Teddy mentioned before, that this, uh, it's an important one, and I do think that I hope that uh, most filmmakers, if not all, should think very, very uh, thoroughly about it. Mm -hmm. So actually going off of that, um, you've both also made installations, um, Man in Black is a, something closer to maybe a video art piece than traditional cinema. I'm curious why you both still find value in the classical experience of cinema, the two-dimensional screen, the cinema audience, when you've explored these other venues and styles too. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, at the beginning, I'm, uh, I'm I start. I only once I made a film that I thought w for the museum space. Before I made films, I always think uh, thought about the cinema, um, but still they were shown in uh, exhibition spaces. Um, just because if someone trusts, they can sh be shown there. I trust them, um, but yeah, I always think about this mainly. To start with, like I make cinema because I went to the cinema. I don't make cinema because I saw things on TV or in my computer. For me, the main reason, at least to start wanting to make cinema, then as, as much as I work, there's many other reasons, was the experience of going to the cinema and uh, the experience of coming out of a film I liked more than what I thought is what I felt in my body and in my mind and how I saw everything around me in a, such a different way than when I came in. There was a very, I was a kid and there was a, such a strong physical sensation of coming out of a film I liked that I could never forget that and for me it didn't happen. Is there a happen. particular film that really have this happened? Mm, I don't know. The one I remember is Star Wars, but I don't know um, probably others. But in this time of my life, I only saw Hollywood films mm. because I don't know. It's what you could see if you were not very much into cinema. And I went with my grandmother, and that's also what she knew. And also, these cinemas were in shopping malls. You know, that spaces I don't like very much. But this thing of such, but they were very normal for me. You know, and coming out and just feeling everything was so different. You know. For me, that was like the m first thing in cinema that caught me so much. And then now I, I was thinking also, um, another thing is like when we have, a, now we have a lot of other screens that were not so present when I was uh, younger. Um, but I think like cinema is like the monument to the screen, you know? And, um, and also that's so special and also that's, with all the screens we have, the one that is the weakest now in like the society and the one that's like mm, not growing is the cinema screen. And I feel it's very important to keep it alive because it's a very different experience from the other screens, even if we can see the film in, in the other screens. I think it's very, very different. Uh, so I make my films for the cinema, even if uh, then I'm happy to show them in any way. Also, when I was in Buenos Aires, many of the films I wanted to see didn't get to cinemas there, so I saw them on my computer, and I'm, I'm very happy that was possible, you know, it's better than not seeing them. Um, but yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> 拍過一些video,大概有有八部吧,還是九部video。So I made about eight different video installations or video projects. 那那麼拍video剛開始呢,就是說 有时候电影系统的这个这种钱和资金呢，会会会会会，呃，可能会会有空缺。So uh, the reason why I make those video projects has a lot to do with the reality I am dealing with as a filmmaker to make 
whatever film projects come into fruition, I have to um, go through a lot of preconditions. Mm -hmm. That those preconditions could be about money, could be about finance. Mm -hmm. So those are my realities in terms mm -hmm. of how I can make the film that I want to make. But at the same time, I might be limited by uh, those uh, conditions, and therefore I need to find a different way to express myself. Uh, but and therefore, I need to resort to other sources of finance and money. Uh, in this case, will be either from galleries, from art museums. So it's more the external conditions and realities that I have to somehow finesse mm. in order for me to move forward with a lot of my creative projects. Uh, Video,我自己就是是一直是从事这个影像的工作,所以我在想,Video,Video这个,这个材料,Video的这种,它的特,特点是什么? And also for me, I have been doing visual images and visual uh, elements that are uh, expressions and, and creative outlets. So for me, it's very much about how am I going to use these two different media or the medium of video and medium of film and how unique it is in terms of using video and how unique it is to use film. So uh, I am experimenting and exploring uh, these two different media and trying to think about what, what is so unique about each one of them. And then that's, it's part of my creative process. Uh, uh, so for me, when I do video projects, I tend to be a little more relaxed, a little brayer in terms of my approach. And then with uh, films, I tend to be the opposite. Uh, I think so for me, uh, video as a, as a medium is something that you can tell stories, uh, that opportunity, I'm sorry, the, the, uh, this, the scope of which mm -hmm. is wider and the possibilities are greater than films. Mm -hmm. So in a way, you can think of this way, that uh, the films can never uh, shadow video works. But on the other hand, video works can actually not replacing, but at the same time, uh, encomp encompassing uh, what film can do. So mm -hmm. to me, there are a lot more opportunities and greater scopes in terms of what video art can do. Uh,因为video的经验,video这个艺术的经验是可以借助,可以,可以包,包,包括,呃,这一百多年来,呃,就是当影像开始出现的时候,我们整个社会使用这个影像的所有的方法都可以在video里边实习,就是都可以在这种
，但是电影是，呃，电影是一个一直只、呃、是一个完整的历史和它的影像的，呃，影像的历史和影像的美学，对，它是一个专属性的。But to me, film still is something that is so unique in a way that it has its own art history, it own it has its film history, it has its own. Brand of aesthetics, and it is something that can, still cannot be replaced by video art. So I think sometimes you need to let go in your work. I need to let go of my creation. 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 很，就是给自己一个放松的机会，可以比较轻松的去拍一个一个一个一一一一一一个作品。So as I I'm continuously making different films, I do think that I need to have the outlet to be a little more relaxed and also take more chances and be braver when I take on those video projects. And to me, it's it's a good Supplement and a good complement of the films I'm making. So, is is, tomorrow our that Manny Black is such a kind of film. And a plug to the film that will be shown tomorrow, which is Manny Black, is more in a, uh, that strain of the video art type of project that I'm doing. Can I add something very short? Yes. Sorry, this that I said all of this about cinema, but I'm still very interested in doing uh, works for uh, the museum space. And also, as Wang Bing was saying, uh, one of the good things about that is that, for example, when I made twice uh, this last time and before something for a biennial or for a museum, um, the best thing was that they gave me money to do something and didn't ask me what I was going to do and didn't ask me to write. Yeah. You know, because they trusted my work and they gave me money no for it. Yeah, exactly. And I think in cinema, everything is very, for the funding, very based in writing. And I think that is not a good thing because a good writer doesn't uh, necessarily make a good filmmaker and a bad writer can make a good filmmaker. But uh, as far as I know, there's no funding that, that has different ways of trying to imagine what film you will do other than writing. So I think that that it would be great if there's uh, different funds that are not based only in writing. Mm -hmm. And then I think that for, I mean, interest, what interests me of make, maybe working for other type of videos is also very simple things as the, now for the first time I made a, a, a video that was not made to be necessarily seen from the beginning to the end, you know, so yeah. And that is very simple thing, but changes a lot on what type of film you can make. And I still never made a film for a specific space but that is something that could be interesting. I remember once I was in a festival in the desert in Jordan and we decided to show my short film uh, projected over the rocks and that changed so much and I was thinking what would happen if I think the film for projecting here or in our places and so I'm always trying to have these small elements that make me change hopefully only that. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing this conversation. Thanks to you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you. And thank you to Vincent, like the thank MVP. You. <laughs>